Yo, what's up, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mid. I'm back with another recent reads. Just got done with the Wolverine Goes to Hell Omnibus by Jason Aaron. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, so stick around and check it out. All right, y'all. So I just got done reading the Wolverine Omnibus by Jason Aaron. This is the follow-up book. This is Wolverine Goes to Hell. And it's similar to the first Omnibus in the sense that it's a couple of different Jason Aaron stories. It's not necessarily one long story, uh, 30 issues. Although I noticed that some of his work, uh, things that happen, carry over to his other stories. Like Dr. Rot from the Insane Asylum. They mention him and he has a cameo in, in one of these stories. But uh, we'll take a look at what's going on. This is the uh, front and back of the actual dust jacket. It collects Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine 1 through 6, which is a team-up. And you know what? I, I realize I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, but I hate Spider-Man team-ups because they always call it a team-up in the uh, story. So I guess this is a team-up, huh, Wolvie? And they always make uh, Spider-Man so antic -y, and they always make him so much like Deadpool. I like serious Spider-Man, going through some shit Spider-Man, Mary Jane got kidnapped or he can't pay the bills Spider-Man. I don't like all that happy-go-lucky. Yeah, I like it when he's like slapstick with criminals he's beating up, but like always joking with the other hero he's teaming up with, not a fan of that. When we look at the art, we'll talk more about the story. Then you got Wolverine uh, 1 through 20 from his 2010 run. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, then it has a 5.1 issue. Well, let, let's talk about it now. So Wolverine 1 through 20 uh, has the Wolverine Goes to Hell storyline within it. So like the storyline suggests, he goes to hell. And I was interested to see how they were going to do that. And I don't want to give any spoilers. So when we look at the art, I'll talk a little bit more about the story. But it's not going to have any spoilers. Then we have... Uh, Schism, X-Men Schism 1 through 5, which I have read. And actually, I, I realized that I've read some of Wolverine Goes to Hell as well. I must have read the, uh, these when I was reading digitally uh, back in like 2012 or something like that. So I didn't mind rereading it. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it more when I'm looking at it. But I have the uh, Schism oversized hardcover, which collects the same stuff. So I'm probably going to give that away. Yeah, and then it has material from uh, Wolverine Goes to Hell uh the road to hell number one so no big deal so this book is fairly new it has a 100 dollar cover price um the uh, actual hardcover has a really cool image of wolverine and the devil in hell so it's not mephisto but there's the devil i guess yeah it's the devil so it's weird to see a marvel comic go kind of biblical but they do it and uh you know it's good. It's a good story. Before we get into the artwork, I definitely enjoyed reading this. It was a pretty quick read. I think I read it in maybe three or four days. A lot of people comment asking me how long does it take for me to read an omnibus and for something modern, yeah, less than a week. Two days if it's really good, three, four days if I'm reading, you know, three or four issues a day. But I try to, you know, knock out five or so issues a day when, I, when I'm reading a book. Uh, and right now I'm in a groove. We just knocked out two we're doing the Valiant stuff. I want to jump into some, into something else. But anyway, I got sidetracked. I definitely like this run. Um, it wasn't anything groundbreaking. It was just a cool Wolverine run. Nothing to write home about. It wasn't whack. Um, Wolverine goes through some shit in this book, though. But anyway, let's take a look at the art. Uh, so y'all stay tuned for that. Or stick around for that. All right, y'all. So here's the cover. Close-up of the uh, Wolverine Goes to Hell uh, by Jason Aaron. Kind of the follow-up to his other omnibus. Here's the back cover. We already showed all this stuff, so let's just get to the artwork. All right, so. Wolverine Goes to Hell by Jason Aaron. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to read to y'all. So Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine 1 through 6 really have nothing to do with Wolverine Goes to Hell. It's kind of like a time-traveling, what-if scenario kind of a story. And I'm not really a fan of stories like that that don't have any real consequences, but this is kind of like, you know, just a, a little story. I didn't love it. I mean, it wasn't like really that bad or anything. They had cool stuff. Phoenix and a gun that 
Wolverine shoots at uh, Ego that is now uh, Doom. It's, it's Planet Doom now. So it's that was pretty cool stuff. Here's the Planet Doom thing. That was a really cool one. But I don't like big stories with no consequences that you know everything is going to be fixed at the end. Um, they're traveling through time because they bank, they break up this bank robbery and there's like these shiny, like teal looking diamonds. Actually, that's them right there. So this guy, I think his name is Saz or Saw or something like that. And, and his little buddy there who's like, they're, they're killers. They're drug dealers and killers. And I'm not going to give any spoiler alerts, but you know, that's the second time I noticed Jason Aaron getting really comfortable with like stereotypes and writing for other races and it was a little cringy to me at some times. Yeah, there was Mojo stuff in here. But anyway, uh, he has diamonds. He, he put them in his teeth. So he's oh, here he goes. He got the grill going, but no no metal, just diamonds in the teeth. I'm trying to be like Birdman. So whatever. It was kind of... Just kind of whatever. Um, the Wolverine has a girlfriend thing. Carries on from the first omnibus in here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Road to Wolverine goes to hell. I forget what happens in here. I think this is him. Uh, he's having a lot of psychological issues. Like I mentioned in my other recent reads, he's um, he's got his memory back and it's not a good thing. So Wolverine's in hell, but then there's a, a Wolverine on Earth that's killing everyone that Wolverine loves. So that's the most I'm going to get into. Mystique's still in here. Um, there's this squad of killers that are, uh, after Wolverine as well, or we find out like this, um, group of older, just regular people kind of set this whole thing up and, um, they're, they're killing everyone that Wolverine loves. They sent Wolverine to hell. And it's a really interesting when you find out later, um, why and how and the, the end game of that. Uh, there's some Silver Samurai story in here at the end of these Wolverine Goes to Hell issues, and you kind of find out why later. This is a cool scene of Wolverines in Hell. That's uh, the devil, and he broke Sabretooth, and Sabretooth is bitch, and he's got him on a leash. So the In Hell stuff was really cool, man. He goes, uh, Wild Child. The stuff when he, he really is in Hell, y'all. But, you know, when you find out how and why, it's kind of like, oh, okay. So anyway, um, X-Men try to take down whoever's possessed Wolverine's body that's not in hell. Wolverine fighting the devil. Alright, so I don't want to give spoilers. Alright, so... Where are we from here? I'm trying to remember. So basically, um, it jumps into... Where the X-Men are at. At this point in time, this is when X-Men are living on Utopia. They've uh, blocked themselves out from the real world. Um, but Quentin Quire um, sabotages a, uh, what do you call it? One of those public congressional hearings and makes all the congressmen and women blurt out all their deep, dark secrets. And, and it basically causes um, everybody in the world to go against x-men and it's funny it was actually what was it a, an arms meeting or uh, something like that and, and every and every nation denied having sentinels but after they declared war on the all the rest of the mutants every country had some version of sentinels some were really old uh n like 78 percent of them didn't work and uh they started attacking utopia did i skip something anyway what starts schism is that uh, it's kind of a reverse role, but there's really not, not many mutants left. And, and the mutant students at Utopia, Cyclops is like, let's go to war. And Wolverine is like, ain't no way we're going to send a bunch of kids to go fight these people. And um, they, that's their disagreement, right? That's their civil war. You got these brothers, the Buzzard brothers, who uh, are cannibals and they whittle guns and bullets made out of teeth, guns out of out of bones and stuff. So they play a little bit of a role through the story. I don't want to give up any spoilers. Cool covers here on this run, though. This is the run that has the uh, J. Scott Campbell Deadpool costume variant for number one, which is like a 
five thousand dollar book in nine point eight. Here's the con the congressional hearing or whatever. So this jumps into schism, and then uh, this was a dope ass uh, Cyclops versus uh, Wolverine battle. What what sets off schism also is that um the the, the one of the children all I, actually all the children of the Hellfire Club members basically kill their parents and inherit the Hellfire Club and there's a whole story like that. Okay, so after schism, you jump back into where Wolverine is. Uh, it's it's kind of a spoiler alert, but not, I mean you should know by now he founds. The Jean Grey School for uh, Gifted Youngsters back in Westchester where the original X-Mansion was. It's in ruins. He establishes that. Uh, but he go he needs to get his money. And he goes back to uh, Chinatown to get his money where he's the Black Dragon there, if you guys remember. And the money is gone. And then he's basically got to go f a fight uh, to get it back. I think I think he has to go to Madripoor. I think the hand took it. That's what happened. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then you have this, you know, this issue with Wilson Fisk is running the hand, and then you have a civil war in the hand, and then, um, you know, Wolverine's involved or whatever. And that's pretty much the gist of that. So a lot of cool variants, uh, covers on the back. Actually, I'll show you guys that Deadpool one I was talking about. Steve Dillon does the art on the last issue, and you could tell right away. So these connecting covers are dope. Let me check the glare. Connecting covers. This is the uh, J. Scott Campbell Wolverine uh, Deadpool variant. I'll show you guys something else that is interesting. When I was, oh, this is a Tron variant. That was when the movie came out. This one is the cover homage to Spider Man 1. And I had this graded in a 9.8, but that's the Wolverine 18 variant. That's a cool cover. So you do get a lot of variants in the back, and you do get a lot of bonus material in this omnibus, you guys. You get um, you get the script for Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine, which I'm not a script guy, but you know it's nice that they included it. You have some sketches, a lot of concept arts in the back here. Here's how they sketched out that two-page panel of Planet Doom and inked it and colored it. Doom the Living Planet. A lot of sketches. So, you know, I, I like these sketches and these concept arts, but I really like these panels right here because my daughter is an aspiring artist. So I want to show her these to show her, like, how you just, how you come up with the panels and they're just rough sketches. And even when you get to detail, I mean, small panels like this don't have that much detail, you know. Even when you look at stuff like this, it's just like lines, you know, so some inspiration there. All right, guys, so uh, that's all for the uh, recent reads on Wolverine Goes to Hell Omnibus by Jason Aaron. This does lead directly into uh, Wolverine and the X-Men and uh, Avengers vs. X-Men. And I, I have already read those stories, so I'm not going to reread them. But I think what I'm going to do is a new segment called Not So Recent Reads, where we can do the same kind of thing, but you know, I read it over a year ago or over two years ago or whatever. Because there's a lot of good books that people want me to do a recent reads on that I, that I read it a while ago. I'm not going to redo it. Anyway. Uh, so maybe I'll film that just to do a follow-up to this to kind of end the Jason Aaron Wolverine trilogy of Omnibus that we have out there. Um, so it, it leads into that. I think what I'm going to do next is uh, start on that final act of our Valiant Deluxe Edition read-through with Exo Man of War uh, Volume 5. And I think the next omnibus, I'm on a Marvel kick right now. I'm going to read Jay, uh, Jason, Jonathan Hickman's uh, Avengers Omnibus Volume 2. And I really want to get into that Punisher Max by Garth Ennis. Th there, are, there are DC stuff that I want to read. I mean, I recently did Batman Nightfall, which was three books. I do want to read Batman by Grant Morrison Volume 1. I do want to read, I do want to read Batman and Robin uh, Omnibus. There's a couple other books I want to jump into. Deadly Class, which is an image title. A lot of people are telling me about that. The Goon, I want to jump into that as well. So, we'll see what we do. Anyways, 
Look out for not so recent reads. Make sure to drop a like on the way out. Drop me a comment. What do you think about this uh, run? Did you read this? Does this make you want to read it? Talk to me. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more recent reads, for more daily comic book related content, whether it's re reviewing a story, showing an omnibus haul, Manimal doing his weekly single issue hauls, his weekly pulls, um, statue unboxing and reviews, Comic Con coverage. Our live shows are epic. We do them every Saturday Saturday night. Um, and uh, we do live comic book auctions on some Sundays. So, man, we got a lot going on. Make sure to join the Geminites Facebook group. It's popping in there. We're over a 1,000 members strong. Everyone's cool as hell. What's really cool about the group is that it's not a focalized group. <laughs> Damn, he's focalized again. It's not just about statues, just about comics, just about movies. It has a little bit of everything, like our channel. So if you go in there and ask a question, no matter how obscure it might be, somebody's got the answer. So that, that's it's a really good resource, man, if you're new to collecting or you want to get into a different aspect of it. Geminites, search it on Facebook, request to join, and make sure you answer the three questions. If you don't answer the questions, I got my mods in there looking at you sideways and looking at your profile pics and all that. So make sure you do that. And uh, last but not least, y'all stay minty. Peace.